Hi everybody, it's Martha. Welcome back. Um, I am here right now playing with this stuff and I thought I'd just turn the video on so that um, you guys could play with me. Um, I saw this in this magazine and now I can't find the magazine. Here it is. I got this creative stamping magazine today at uh, the bookstore. And it's a UK magazine, but it's here in the US now on the stands. I've been waiting for it because I have been waiting for these stamps that I really, really wanted that come as part of the magazine. So I'm very excited that I got that. And um, there is something in here. I did not, here it is, um, about watercolor magic. And I wanted to play with it because. There are other things I'm supposed to be doing right now, but I don't feel like it. So this is avoidance art. So I thought that um, I'd just turn on the camera and see if y'all would like to see me doing this. Um, as you can see, I have done a little bit so far. I'm a little bit inky. What I'm using is I am using these distress inks. And I bought these. They come in a pack of them. Um, four or five in a pack I think it is I can't ever remember but anyway I have several colors um, and it's really bright in here because the Sun is shining but if I open the blinds it's too bright and then if I close the blinds it might be too dark so I hope it's not too dark when this comes out anyway um, as I said I thought I would bring you along and show you what I've been playing with now I started um, using the inks on this plastic that the magazine and the stamps came in. Um, the magazine came in this and the stamps were inside this one. So you could use any kind of plastic like this. Um, I did turn this so there was no print on this side because I wasn't sure what would happen. But um, I have decided to try doing it on this. Uh, this is a piece of waxed paper. And I have freezer paper down with the shiny side facing up in case the ink decides to spread. Um, so what I'm going to do is just keep playing. And I have a bunch of different kind of paper scraps. This is white cardstock. And I really like the way this one came out. That was my first one. This one I'm not as thrilled with because I have too much of this um, purple on there. This one I really like. But what I'm learning is more is not more. More is too much. So I have to learn to work smaller. I tend to like, oh, let's do this whole thing and then I'll spread it around. It doesn't work so well that way. So I'm learning that um, less is really more. So let's see. I'm going to try it on this wax paper because I haven't done that before. I was, like I said, I was doing it on the plastic. So you just spread the ink. And then I have this dispre dis bleh, bleh, bleh. <laughs> get the marbles out of my mouth. It's a Tim Holtz distress sprayer. But really, I mean, it wasn't that expensive, but any spray bottle that will do a fine mist will work. And I'm not putting too much water on it. Um, I am playing around with the amount of water while I'm doing this. And what I want to do is I just want to do this. I'm twisting it. Now, this ink that I did previously is already dry. So I'm just kind of twisting it because as you can see from this one, if you see these little squares, I just plopped the ink down, sprayed it and put the cardboard down or cardstock down. And I didn't like the way that came out very much. Now, if I cut this up, it'll look fine. And that's what I've learned by watching other artists is that if you just make these and don't worry about too much about the way it looks um, to start with if you cut it up for stuff tags use it as backgrounds or whatever it it comes out looking really nice so I'm just gonna play here um, I think I'm gonna put a little and what I'm doing is I am drying it in between um, that way your colors don't get too muddy so I have my little heat tool here and I'll just
You just want to dry it enough so your colors don't muddy. Um, it's still a little damp, but we'll give it a shot. There, I like that. And now I'm going to dry that because the next color I put on, I don't want it to be muddy. soak up a little of this on the back. I think I'm getting more on my hands than I am on the so this is a this is evergreen bow. And you can mix the colors a little bit. Um, you don't want to do too much. You don't want to get this ink on this ink pad. So you can like put the colors beside there. There I go doing a lot again, so we'll see how this comes out. And then see how it bubbles up when you get it wet? And then I think I'm just going to lay this down, smush it, and then twist it a little. Ooh, pretty. <laughs> I'm going to do the back. Yeah, I'm getting it too wet now. See, I didn't get it that wet to begin with. So I'm sorry there's a lot of heat gun use in the middle here. I don't know if any of you have tried this. I also have, um, uh, I can't remember the name now, and I have to find them. Um, and I didn't pull them out before I started, and they were right here the other day. Um, <laughs> oh my gosh. Let me get up and see if I can find them. Nope, can't find them. They were here. Well, I'll figure it out. Anyway, um, I'm not going to make this so wet. And I'm going to use a variety of papers. So let me see what else. Here's some tear-offs that I've done. I think this is way too wet. I think that's the problem. Yeah, all that's doing is getting my paper wet. So... I'm going to dry this off with a paper towel. And I'm going to try this again. So I'm going to use a little bit of blue. And, oops. And a little bit of green. And I'm going to just squirt it a couple of times. Let's try this. Oh yeah, see how much more um, color you get when you don't oversaturate it with water? Very nice. I like it. And then use a little peacock. Urgh! And then a little this lilac and then we'll just spray a tiny bit of water on there and then I'll do a little bit at a time 
and spread it around on the back here. My nose is running. So um, now, if you wanted to use a rubber stamp on here, or you wanted to cut, uh, punch this out, or use a die cut, I think that'd come out really beautiful. I have a, as I said, I did not plan this ahead. I just turned the camera on. A really pretty uh, butterfly punch and this is by the paper studio at Hobby Lobby and if I put this right in the end there oh it's really hard to do the cardstock isn't that gorgeous those are the two sides but you wouldn't think you'd get that prettiness out of, you know, splotches of ink and color. So I thought that was really pretty. I don't have any other really pretty decorative punches, unfortunately. But you could do a lot with these. And if you did it on paper, you could make paper flowers out of it. Um, and you could stamp on it. Let's... Let's do that. I'm going to use my new stamps. Oh, come on. The one thing about these stamps is when you get them, they are really, really adhered to this plastic. And they also have a really strong chemical smell. Let me first get them out and use them. Oh, don't want to set it there. That's full of ink. Let me see if I can find. <laughs> I am not organized today at all. <sighs> okay, so I'm going to use this dragonfly. I'll put it right up there. And I'm going to get out my. The black will look really pretty against this. I was moving some things around, getting the um, wax paper and the freezer paper from across the room. And the dog beds are over near that. And um, my one dog, he was not thrilled with me moving things around and making noise, so he left the sunroom. And then I couldn't get him to come back in before I shut the door to record so now he's standing outside the door looking all forlorn and I feel bad because he's outside the door isn't that pretty you could cut it out and just use it on something just like this I really like this. 
I know fussy cutting is not fun to watch, but it's the only way I can get this out of here, get this done. I think somewhere I have, I know I have butterfly die cuts, not die cuts, um, you know, cutting plates to cut them out on a die cutting machine. I have a small cuddle bug die cutter, but I don't tend to pull out my die cutter very much. I don't use my dies very much. I don't know. I just find it kind of a pain. They don't always turn out. Isn't that pretty? And the back is colorful too. I think that's so pretty. I can't wait to put that on something in a journal. And this. What's going to be hard is choosing which side of this to use. <laughs> so yeah, I mean... I think this is fun, and I'm going to keep these bits because I can use those for something, too, for a collage or whatever. So I thought I would share that with you. Um, I think I'm going to do some more. I do, I do. Let's see what happens. Um, I did something with wax paper. There it is. Let's see what happens if we use... I have some heavy tracing paper here. I'm going to use some of that. Of course, I didn't, well, yeah, I guess I finished that one. Let's see. I'm going to use some different colors. So I'm going to get this cleaned off. Oh, I think I'm going to sneeze. Excuse me. It's really, really sunny in this in this uh, sunroom right now, and it's getting warm, and the heat is um, making me sneeze. <laughs> so yeah, excuse me for that. That was unexpected. a little bit of orange and yellows that I have. This is um, this is the, the mini archival inks. So I have the mini archival inks, which I just thought about it, but the archival inks won't react to the water. <laughs> I don't think. Oh, they are. That's cool. I think it will. Let's see. Uh-oh. We're curling. Yep, too much water. Again, when will I learn? Oh, I never learn. Didn't I say not to use too much water? And then I didn't listen to myself. Do as I say, not as I do. My examples will teach you what not to do. Oh my goodness. Oh, now it's curling the other way. I can't win. <laughs> I can't win. Let's see what happens if I put it back on. It's just going to get wet again. That's what's going to happen. All right. So let's see. Let's put some... Do I have any... There's some. This is the green that I put down the first time. And then I think I'm going to go back to the distress inks because they're the ones that react to the water the best. Maybe. If I can open it. Okay. One squirt. One mist. That's all I did. about it. 
So maybe the tracing paper isn't the idea to use, the thing to use. Okay, we'll kind of let that dry the rest of the way on its own. Move this before it gets ruined. There's the butterfly. Um, let's try. What else do I have in here? Oh my gosh. Okay, this is just um, some tea stained kind of watercolor paper. So I'm going to try some of that. I'm going to put that aside. And I'm going to put some orange. And I'm going to put some yellow, dark yellow. And I'm going to try the green again. I think this actually worked better. Not so much on the waxed paper, but on the, um, the plastic I had. Now, the lady in the magazine, she puts it on acetate. So maybe waxed paper is not the best way to um, engage this ink. So let's try the plastic. So I will try this plastic. And I will put um, some lighter yellow. And... I have these upside down, so I can't really tell very well what they all are until I turn them over. Once, two squirts, because <laughs> the one didn't really seem like it did anything to the... to the ink. Oh yeah, it definitely works better on the plastic. So if you have like a, um, what are those plastic page insert thingies, page protectors? If you have one of those, it would work. If you have any of this plastic from, you know, a magazine, it would work. Um, I'm going to do some more yellow. If you had... Um, Oh, there I go with heavy-handed with the water again. Oh, shoot. Any kind of plastic, I think, would work best. Because the, um, the wax paper didn't really work very well. And I think, um, like, plastic wrap would be hard to hold down. So I don't know if that would work very well either. So let's see. Come on. Use a little more orange. And like that. And and yellow. And then a squirt. Squirt. Because there's already water on there. And twist it. Other side and twist it. And then I'm going to do this side because it needs some. Yes. It's turning out pretty well. Now I was never a mixed into mixed media. I don't have the experience some other people that we watch on YouTube have. So you know, this is all new to me. I like it though. Let's see what happens. I like that. It's still a little damp. I'm going to set that aside. I'm going to see what happens if I do the plastic and do the tracing paper again. And see if I get a better result. I wish my nose had stopped dripping. I think that's from uh, the heat in here, like I said. Okay. 
Well, we'll just do. I'm just doing one squirt. <laughs> this tracing paper wasn't that fond of the water. Yep, it definitely works better if you do it on plastic. So let's see. Oh, come on, squirt the water. The fun part about the tracing paper is you can see what's going on on the other side. Although I don't think the tracing paper is that absorbent, so I think that's part of my problem here. So there you go. There's a couple of different examples. Um, I really like this. I want to add some more to this because I want to do, um, I want to stamp some flowers and then cut them out. That's what I want to do. Um, so I have green and yellow and orange going here. So I think I'll just add some more of the green. Ugh. I think. Is it doesn't come out very good. Okay, let's see what happens. I make it a surprise when I turn it over. Well, that got a little muddier than I wanted, but that's okay. We shall go for some orange to brighten up that green. Oops, did it on the wrong thing. <laughs> Got carried away. Not me. I would never get carried away. Right? Of course, if you've watched any of my other videos, you would know I always get carried away. All right, so let's see. I want this up here. This down here, some more there, some more yellow. Ah. Mellow yellow. Although this yellow is not very mellow, it's pretty darn bright. And it probably depends on what papers you use, too. Like, this is a watercolor paper that's tea dyed. So that might be why it's absorbing the colors better. I mean, it's meant to. That's what it's made for. Oh, yeah. That brightened it up a lot. I like that. I'm sorry for all the heat drying. I can't get around it. As I said, I just picked this up and started doing it and turned the camera on, so I wanted to play with it and have you all around to watch. Hot. I guess that means it's cooked, right? Yeah, 
seems pretty good. Okay, so let's see what I do with the stamps. I think I want to choose this one. And I think I'm going to choose I didn't like that. No. Okay. So I am going to. I have a plan. I think I'm going to cut this out into a tag, maybe. <laughs> it hurts when I think, really, honestly. It must hurt you guys to watch me think. Yeah, maybe. That's too wide. Two and a half. Still a little, a, a little bit damp, and my block is right here, so I'm going to put the flower there, and I think I'm going to put the honeycomb up here, and the little bee is going to be, oops, <laughs> that's not going to work, <laughs> oh my gosh, okay. Make sure it fits on the card that I just made, right? Okay. And I am going to get my little foam out because I like the way my stuff comes out better with these stamps when I use foam. So tomorrow we are going to go check out new home builds. Um, it's not that I don't like my house. I just don't like the location. I love the house. Um, although I do think it's haunted. But that's a whole nother story. So look at that. Isn't that gorgeous? Now if you wanted to, you could cut around all of them. But I'm not going to. I'm going to make this a tag. Ooh, I'm excited. Now, I might have to back this because it's pretty flimsy. I might have to put this on um, cardstock, but that's okay. I think I'm going to be making more of those. Um, but yeah, I uh, we're going to go look at new home builds. I don't know if it's going to amount to anything, but um, I am excited to go look. I've never lived in a new house. I'm going to be 63 this year. My husband was in the military for 21 years. And we've always lived in uh, either military, government quarters, rentals, or... Um, why do I think that's closer and then it's not? Military housing, rentals, or... Um, We've had, we've owned, this is our third house we've owned, but we've been here just a little less than three years. So, um, but I didn't want to move here in the first place. It's a location that I wasn't really thrilled with. So, we're going to go look. It's probably going to be out of our price range because my husband wants to retire soon. <gasps> I'm so happy with this. I think I'm going to be doing a lot more of these. What I do with my paper cutter. And, um, but it'll be fun to look. We've seen the houses themselves. 
but we're actually going to go talk to the salespeople and see what we can actually get one for. So wish me luck. <laughs> wish me luck. Where is... There they are. And um, I'm excited. The houses are really pretty. But the thing that excites me the most is the amenities. You know, there's going to be, there's an indoor pool, an outdoor pool, a bocce court. Um, and my husband's Italian, so we like to play bocce ball. Um, there's pool tables inside. There's uh, ping pong. There's um, tennis courts. Not that I run around outside in the heat and, you know, hit a tennis ball around because that's not my thing. But, um... <laughs> This has a little hole in it. I think I'm going to chop that off. Um, but it's the amenities that are attracting me. I, won't, You know, when I've had a long day of creating, I want to go um, play in the pool. I want to go relax. I want to I wanna play bocce ball or go over and, on a rainy Sunday and play some billiards you know we used to do that when when we were first married way way long time ago 1975 um we um didn't have any money we were living in germany he was in the army he was a spec four which is a specialist four he was enlisted, not an officer, and we didn't have much money. So on Sundays, everything was closed in Germany back then on Sundays. I don't know if it still is. Oh, my Lord, these are so hard to get off. But we would um, go to the rec center, and we'd play pool, we'd play ping pong, We'd go have some lunch. Oh my goodness. <laughs> if you could see how hard I'm pulling. Like seriously, crazy hard. Um and and I just I enjoyed that. It was fun. And it's a good way to, you know, get some exercise and just have fun. Oop. Oh my. I almost ruined the whole thing. Oh my gosh, I'm sweating. It's not that warm out, but the sun beating in here is just so hot. And I even have the sliding glass door open to the deck. It's crazy. Oh, this is going to be pretty too. I'm excited. I love these stamps and I love this background. I'm going to be doing a lot more backgrounds like this. The gelatos. I have the gelato crayons. I don't know what I did with them, where they are, but I haven't played with those yet, but that's next. I'm going to do that next for sure. So. Oh my gosh. I really like that. Isn't that pretty? I'm happy with that. I'm going to put this on cardstock too. So nice. I am so so happy with my new experiment, my playing. So, yep, there's going to be a lot more of this happening. And when I don't feel like, you know, things I should be doing, I'll be in here playing. So I hope you pull out some stuff. Pull out your distress inks or your distress oxides. They'll work too. And, um, and some paper, different papers. Find yourself, you know, if you've got magazines that are in these plastic things, pull that out or a, um, like I said, a document protector or any piece of firm plastic will work. It looks like not wax paper. The wax paper didn't work very well. I don't know if the freezer paper would work. I think it might have the same effect as the wax paper, 
um, I'm going to play with this tracing paper some more and I'll see what I come out with. But anyway, um, cause <laughs> you know, crinkly. So, um, have some fun and experiment because this is my first experiment. I have watercolors too. I haven't played with them, but the same thing would happen if you put watercolor on the plastic and spray it a little, you get pretties. You get fun pretties. And then all you have to do is have a nice stamp that's easy to cut around. Hey, doesn't get any better than that or a pretty punch, right? So go have some fun. I'm glad you watched. Thank you for coming. I appreciate it. If you like this video, give me a thumbs up, please. And if you haven't done it, subscribe below and have yourself a great day and happy crafting. And I'll be back. That's a promise, not a threat. Take it easy. Bye.